Hey guys, this is day two of the Bootstrap blog. Um, if you haven't watched day one and done that stuff, go ahead and do that first. Um, today we're going to be talking about a concept called dry, which means don't repeat yourself. So for code to be maintainable and easy to modify, um, it's good to not copy and paste things all over the place. Because if you have to change it for one of the things, you have to change it for all of them and remember where everything is. So for example, we've had to copy and paste our navigation across multiple page pages, and that's not very dry um, in previous projects. So when you need a change to happen to the navigation, you have to remember everywhere it's used unless you do the following. Um, there are techniques called server-side rendering and client-side rendering, uh, both of which use a program to generate the HTML that's going to go on your page. The first kind is called server-side rendering. So this is when code on the server, which is where your website's files live, that generates HTML before the response from the server is sent. So when I visit a web page, I'm sending a request to the server, get me all the pages, and then the server is going to send the pages that it has. Um, and so the code is going to run in between and make sure that the pages that I'm receiving have the right stuff in it. Um, and then client-side rendering is when a scripting language, usually JavaScript, renders information in the browser after the response from the server was received. So let's say I have a navigation bar that's consistent across every page. Um, I could write some JavaScript that would add that navigation bar to every page once the page has come to my browser and begins loading. So don't worry if this is uh, super confusing or is it's a new concept. Um, I'm going to show you how we can do a little bit of client-side rendering and server-side rendering to make things a little more maintainable in our blog project. So there are some advantages to each. Um, Server-side rendering is nice because everything is generated before it is sent, so there's no extra waiting in the browser. Um, and it's search engine optimization friendly because Google and other search engines can easily visit these servers and see exactly what the website's going to look like and thus categorize it to the proper search results. Um, Client-side rendering, uh, there's an advantage to this one. You do not need to reload the whole page if there's a change. So with server-side rendering, you'd have to go get all the pages again because that's where all of the logic is being run and all the content is being generated is on the server. If it's being generated within the browser, you don't have to go to the server all the time. So some examples of this would be like updating scores on ESPN. If you are watching a basketball game or something, and following along with the scores, you'll notice that the scores just kind of automatically update. And this is all being done in the browser with JavaScript. They're not having to reload the entire page. Another example of this is Flash games. Um, you don't want to have to reload the entire page every time you do something in a Flash game or an equivalent HTML5 game these days, because Flash is dead and it's sad. So what we're going to do in our project is, um, first, you can fork this starting point for today. Um, we're going to make another post, and then we're going to um, run some code that will add the post to our navigation. We'll also add it to the front page of our blog. You'll notice that post one has already been put here, um, where it says moon for sale and it's also in the navigation. So our second post is going to be added to this list um, programmatically through some code so that we don't have to repeat ourselves by writing the title of the page on the front page in the navigation and then on the post page itself. We can just write it once and then it will auto-populate everywhere else. It's gonna be pretty slick. So what we're gonna do first is Make a post to HTML that has the same information as post one, except have a new picture and new text. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this post one code 
and make a new file called post2.html inside my post folder and paste it in there. And then I'm just going to uh, make some small changes. You, you'll have to change the image on your own and the text on your own um, for the article. And you can be about whatever you want. Just make sure you upload the image to the image folder and properly link it, just like we have here with the sample image. So all I'm going to do is change the information in the header. So I'm going to make this article about um, rogue garden gnomes. Short description, garden gnomes are responsible for global warming. And then I can say, posted by me on today's date. OK, so you'll notice that these, um, these tags right here have an attribute called data type. Um, the way I've set up some code to run is it's going to identify um, each piece of data by its data type. So we've got a title, we've got a description, and we have some metadata. Um, and then this is all in a post. So as long as you have these data types, everything else we're going to do will run fine. So we're going to run a Python script that's going to do some server-side rendering for us. Um, and then we should be able to see the changes on all of our pages when we go to visit them. So if you go to um, the bottom of your Rebel page, there should be a tab that says Shell. Go ahead and click on it. We're going to run this Python script by typing in, let me zoom in, Python 3 space, and then the file name is write capital JS dot py. And it has processed our HTML, and it's gathered the data. So it, it gathered that the title was Rogue Garden Gnomes, which we put in here, and then the description and the metadata. Okay, let's go ahead and visit our home page and see if it worked. Okay, it didn't quite work the first time. To fix it, though, all I did was I went to these two files. So in, in the JavaScript folder, I went to navbar and I did control A, control C, control V. Um, and then same thing in postlist.js, control A, control C, control V. Um, because <clears throat> REPL's server was being dumb and because the Python script updated the file, it didn't like load the new file that the script updated. It kept the same one that <clears throat> um, was there before. So just do that on navbar and post list. Just copy everything and then paste it so that you're the last one who edited the file. And you'll notice that on the home page, we've got that title there. And then in the post, we've got the link to the post there. And there it is. So, um, the server-side rendering added some code that would add the title to the front page, the um, navigation, and then just, of course, keep it on the post. And the JavaScript helped uh, update the nav bar for when um, you are on a different page. Um, you'll be able to navigate properly to the home page or a different post page. So that would be an example of client-side rendering. OK? Um, you don't need to know about all the nuts and bolts about how it all worked. All you have to do is run that Python script once your post 2 is finished, and then do the copy and paste thing I showed you on those two JavaScript files, and it will be finished. And you can go ahead and turn it in um, by just you know taking your REPL link and submitting it to Canvas. That's it. See you later.